So I'm going to finish up in Philippians chapter 2. Because remember that the, uh, the disciples were quarreling over who was going to be the greatest among them. And Jesus said, the world does that. We don't. That's a different kingdom. The world gives you indoctrination. I will give you illumination. <laughs> Which one do you want to live in? Which nation? I used to live in hallucination. <laughs> Until I got illumination. <laughs> I was bound for extermination. <laughs> Until I got a car nation. <laughs> hey. Aha. Which nation you want? You want to be an impersonation? <laughs> or do you want your God destination? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of nations out there. <laughs> Psalm 2 says, I will give you the nations for your inheritance. Yeah. We read that today. That was read right up here. Kiss the sun. That's what we do. We're going to kiss you, Lord. Is it easy? Absolutely not. You know, like people say about New York City, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And there's really a lot of truth to that. I, I love being in the city. I love being with the intellectual capital that's over there, the brilliance of the people in my industry that work in the finance industry and Wall Street. They come from all over the world. And like for every job, there's 20 other people that want that job, right? So like the competition is brutal. But when they get saved, man, they, they go through the word like a ravishing person who hasn't eaten food in, in years. Like, they just devour the word. It's amazing how radical the transformation is. So you never condemn anybody, right? God doesn't do it, right? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death from the devil that we were born into. I can eat the meal that heals when I take communion. I can be tapping into that divine nature on the inside of me on a daily basis. So this is what Paul says as, as a, a charge to the troops. Braveheart, right? Remember Mel Gibson riding on his horse in front of them? Yeah, you guys could turn around and go back right now. But what are you going to tell your kids? How are you going to live with yourself knowing that in the moment of truth you backed off and ran? You might want to live that way. I'm not going to live that way. And I would have followed him into battle, even though he had that weird face paint thing going on. <laughs> so this is how you should think among yourselves. With the mind that you have because you belong to Christ, who though in God's form did not regard his equality with God as something that he should exploit. You know, like if you're a boss and one of your employees is giving you a hard time and you say, do you know who I am? It's like, oh boy, we're in trouble. The boss doesn't know who he is. <laughs> if you say, do you know who I am? You lost already. They knew who you were the day you got hired. They got hired. You're trying to pull rank. But you're not being a very inspiring leader when you say that. I'm not going to do it just because you said to do it just because you're the boss if you're treating me with contempt. So you typically go to that line because you've got no other line. You have to do it because I said. Well, that's if you're the coach of the football team, you're going to lose your games because people want to be inspired by your example, even when you mess up. So Peter messed up, and Jesus said, don't worry. Your faith is not going to fail. And when you come back, you're going to strengthen your brothers. They're going to look at you and say, even though Peter messed up, he got over it. He repented. And Judas, when he, when he messed up, he killed himself. Right? There's a, there's a worldly sorrow that leads to death, but there's a godly sorrow that leads to life and repentance. And guilt might not be the worst thing in the world. There's certain kinds of guilt that we need to understand. It's not really guilt. It's conviction, right? But some kinds of guilt is condemning, and some kind is just conviction. It's like, no, I, I, I'm Hebrew national hot dogs. I answer to a higher authority. I'm not going to be like the world. I don't care what the standard of the world is. i got a different standard that I'm following. So let that mind be in you, who Christ, even though he could have pulled rank, did not pull rank. It's a little harder to understand in the King James. You know, 
you know, it says he did not consider equality to be God, something to be, I don't, I don't even remember, it was a while ago when I read it. This just speaks to me. It says he didn't exploit the fact that he was equal with God. That speaks to our heart, doesn't it? And a lot of the humbling things that we go through are there to remind us we can't do it without him. We're not independent, and we're not codependent. We're interdependent. Codependent is what Jack Frost said, two ticks, no dog. That's a life-sucking relationship. The relationship you're in is pulling all the life out of you. It's not redemptive. You're being drained all the time. You need to be around life-giving relationships. I'm not saying reject people that are not that, but if you're not getting some life on the side here, you're not going to have anything to give out. Right? I don't mean to stray. I'm just saying, as part of the kingdom, when you serve in the kingdom, you learn a lot about yourself. Okay? It's not just Bible verses. It's how do I apply these Bible verses. As you're serving people, and, and we are now, some of you have been great about bringing food and bringing clothes, and we're going to be out in the community and handing out this stuff. That's a great act of love, right? That's a sacrificial act of love that those of us that have been blessed are now turning around, as it says in Genesis, we've been blessed to do what? Be to be a blessing. You're showing the love of God. And what did he do? Instead of pulling rank on us, he emptied himself and received the form of a servant. Excuse me being born in the likeness of humans, and even having a human appearance, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. So how would that apply to us? It's not our natural life. Yes, I mean, you know, some people are, are being martyred today. That's not happening in, in the United States, and let's pray it never does. But we do, we're, we're commanded by Jesus to pick up our cross daily and follow him. Not pick up his cross, Pick up my cross. I can only pick up mine. You can only pick up yours. And, you know, it's not easy because crucifixion is painful. <laughs> right? Something has to die. So if he's telling us daily to do that, that means there's something we can be working on with God every day. And there's nothing to be ashamed about that. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself because I know I've said it before. But th this is part of the suffering of Christ. He came in the world and he was tempted to sin, but he did not sin. That's a suffering you know, denying your passions is a form of suffering because you're obedient to God. So let's not translate the Bible to say, if we love people, we'll just treat them the way they want to be treated. If you love them and you know they're in sin, you have to tell them they're in sin. That's what Jesus did to the woman caught in adultery. Go and sin no more. Because I love you. Sin is going to destroy your life. The wages of sin is death. Anybody got one of those paychecks from the devil? Come on, I'm the only one? All right, not, not lately. I'm saying before you got saved. Yeah. I haven't gotten one lately either, thank God. <laughs> Don't plan on getting any either. You know, and I said earlier, when I wanted to sing an anthem, you know, before we ended worship. And I, that's how I look at that song, How Great Is Our God. Like, it's just one of those things that's so good to remind yourself, you know. And when you sing it together... There's an amplification. And you know, the name above all names, worthy of all the praise, right? Like that's so good to keep reminding yourself because there's so much competing throne room stuff trying to get the throne of your heart. No, 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 sorry. God so greatly exalted him for being obedient to what the mission was, not to pull rank, not to call other people out, not to court martial people that made a mistake, to tell Peter, look, you're going to fall, but I'm going to pray for you so that when you come back, you know, just put yourself back around that campfire when Jesus looks at him. And Jesus is looking at him like a loving father would look at a child and say, it's okay, Peter. Don't bail on me right now. In this moment of shame, when you're hearing that rooster crow and you're remembering that I told you this would happen, I warned you that this would happen. So we don't have to beat ourselves up about mistakes that we've made. You know, we're in the counseling room a lot. I've been counseling a lot of people in the last few weeks, and I'm not condemning anybody about it, but it's been a rough ride through COVID. Not everybody's handling the isolation well and the inability to connect with other people. So cut yourself a little slack, but don't approve sin. But, man, I'm telling you, some people just have to learn how to forgive themselves for the mistakes they're making. I'm sure Peter had to do that. So, look, can we just stand together for a minute? I want to just finish with another verse, but while we're standing, 
And uh, you don't have to self-identify if you're dealing with shame in your life. I just feel really strongly that the Lord wanted to get this message across today that he's not rejecting you just because you might have made a mistake. I said it earlier, things surface. When we're in isolation, things surface. They might not have come out. You might not have noticed. Like, let's just say God gave this example. He used to work in the oil field, and whenever they got a new pipe, they would put a cap on one end, and, and they'd pump water into it with a meter on it, and they would test it to see if there was any leaks in the pipe. You get it? Smart thing to do before you put it in the, in the ground. And he said they would, they would raise the pressure to get it up to whatever the manufacturer said, and there wouldn't be any leaks. But then they would increase the pressure a little bit higher, and all of a sudden you'd see a little spurt of water come out. So the crack was there. It just didn't get exposed until the pressure was too intense. So that's all I'm trying to tell you. If you're beating yourself up, let go of that thing. Break off condemnation off your life today. When Jesus looked at Peter, it wasn't a condemning look, in my opinion. <laughs> that's all that is. It's my interpretation. I think Peter looked at... I think Jesus looked at Peter, who was expecting to be shamed, and it was like, no, sir, no, sir, you're not out. I'm praying for you, and your faith is not going to fail. Not only you, Peter, you're going to strengthen the brothers that are around you. So I speak over you, every one of you, that that's who you're going to be, that Jesus is praying for you right now. Financial issues, job insecurity, whatever the thing is that's trying to rattle you, what the devil means for evil, God is going to turn it around for good. It says in verse 10 that now at the name of Jesus, every knee under heaven shall bow, and on the earth too and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus, the Messiah, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But we make that confession today, that my knee bows today to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Mark 10, 45, Jesus said... Even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So if you've been ransomed unto God, just lift your hands, okay? So you got, thank you, Lord, that you gave your life as the purchase price to free me from the slavery of death and sin. And you sacrificed yourself to be the ransom payment for my salvation. Help me do what we just read in Philippians that we would let your mind be in us, that we, instead of exploiting our positions, would take on the form of a servant and love the confused people in this world, not condemn them, but love them into your kingdom.